Hello everyone and welcome to another iRacing video. Yes, you heard me right, iRacing. You've waited months for one video and then all of a sudden two come along in the space of a few days. Today we're racing in the Ferrari Fix Challenge. Now if you've been watching my channel for a while you may remember that I originally bought this car at the start of last season but it's had a bit of a makeover since then. The original 488 GT3 car is no more. It's been replaced by this 2020 Evo version. Thankfully iRacing are offering credits to anyone who bought the original 488 within the last two years. So I've cashed in those credits to replace this car and give the series another try. And as you can see from qualifying, we've got encouraging pace. We've managed to put it fifth on the grid with a qualifying time of 109.1. Now we know the competition is going to be fierce in this series. And when you put this many GT3 cars on a tight and twisty track like Summit Point, you know there's going to be fireworks too. So let's get over to the grid and see if we we can survive. Get ready, going green. Oh, I was half asleep then. I completely missed my cue and the front four have got away. And we've already lost a position. Boyce around the outside, carrying a lot more speed. As is Graham Lynch behind by the looks of it. He's close right in two and he's going to pull out of my draft. Charge alongside and he's going to blitz by me down the start finish straight. I've got no chance of defending that so we're going to have to give him the position as well. So it really wasn't a good start for us there. We've dropped two positions. We're down to seventh and I really wasn't sharp enough when the lights went green. We gave away valuable time. And now I'm a little bit worried that Ritesh Sharma might try and dive up the inside into this fast left-hander he is. Oh man, that's a risky place to overtake on this track. Thankfully I anticipated it and I was able to give him a bit of space, but it has cost me some exit speed. And now we're getting properly duffed up. That's two more cars that had the pace to charge by me. So by my best calculations, we're now down to 10th place. So what was a really promising qualifying session has come undone inside the first lap here at Summit Point. It's been a disaster. We've gone from 5th to 10th and we're struggling to keep up with them now. And look at Raphael Jacot in the sky car behind. He's got a much better drive out of the penultimate turn. He's going to pull alongside and take another position up the inside into the final corner. So we're going backwards quickly here. And look at Raphael thanking me for letting him through. I wish I did let him through. I'm struggling big time here. There's nothing I can do to protect these positions. We're going to lose another one now. Look, Duran Sergio is going to dive up the inside into T1. He's running a little bit deep. I did have to take avoided action there to miss the contact. Dear me, we've been beaten up good and proper here. We're down to 12th from a starting position of 5th. Right, let's check out a replay of the first lap to see just how bad it got. And we'd already lost one position by the time Graham Lynch charged past me. He left me standing still down the start and finish straight. And as Lynch rejoins the racing line to seal off the position into T1, our attention now turns to what's going on behind us. Mainly that black number seven of Ritesh Sharma. Now this upcoming left-hander scares me at the best of times. It's a really tricky corner and you don't want to have someone tuck it up the inside of you, which is exactly what Sharma did there. I did manage to run it wide to give him the space he needed, but it cost me big time. Well, that's both Dennis Oscar and Jonathan Fonseca both taking full advantage to get the positions. And then it wasn't long before I came under another attack. This time it's Raphael Jacot sticking it up the inside into the final turn. And he's also dragged along Duran Sergio in the number nine car. And Sergio's also got a better run out of that final corner. He pulls alongside to take the inside line into T1. He did run it just a tiny bit wide, but I'd already anticipated it. And all of a sudden, we're down to 12th. Well, we've at least got a little bit of breathing room to the car behind now. It's a 1.2 second gap back to Mike LaJoy. So if I can just find a rhythm now that we're a few laps into this race, I do feel confident that I can stick with this pack ahead and hopefully battle with them. I know that I'm quicker than a lot of them. The qualifying times prove that, but I just need to string a few consistent laps together now and not make any mistakes. We've lost someone on the right. He's going to rejoin. Oh, that was close. And that was Sharma by the looks of it who tucked it up the inside of me on lap one. So we've gained one position back. 
Well, let's check out the replay and see how Sharma ended up on the grass and he's flashing his headlights furiously at Christensen in front of him and then dives in way too late into the entry into the carousel. He was lucky he didn't take Christensen with him there. I tell you what, these three cars in front are getting closer and closer to each other and that's going to play into my hands. They're going to be battling with each other. They're going to slow each other down and we're going to be able to get closer. And we have got closer. We've reeled Sergio right in now. But we just can't get our line right through the exit of this carousel and we've just lost a few tenths again there. So we got really close to them, but we weren't able to capitalise on it. So we're still just over a second behind Sergio. Sergio thought about having a look up the inside of Jacot into the final turn. He didn't see it through. So we're going to cross the line to start lap five then. We did a 109.8 last time out. This time we've done a 109.7, so we are getting quicker. We're still a little bit off qualifying pace, but we're getting faster with every lap. And if we can just keep this momentum, I do feel confident that we'll be right on Sergio's tail within half a lap. Oscar in the pink car taking the defensive line, so that forces Chacot to the outside and it forces him too wide. He's lost it and somehow we've managed to avoid them, but we've had to take to the gravel. Oh, that's rotten luck. We're going to lose positions here. Sergio got caught up in that way worse than I did, but that didn't do us any favours at all. Yeah, keep your eyes on Chacot in the sky car. He takes to the outside line with Oscar defending, but he just clips the grass and it sends him into a spin. Sergio jams on the brakes and it looks like I might just have clipped him as I took avoid in action. But yeah, look at the carnage. There are Ferraris everywhere. So although we did gain a couple of positions in that incident involving Jacot and Sergio, we of course surrendered them straight away when we had to take to the gravel to avoid it. So we're still in 11th as we start lap 6. And oh no, someone else is going to spin out on this turn. It's Mario Schaxable. But thankfully this time, unlike the previous lap, Mario didn't spin back onto the track. Oh, my heart was in my mouth for a moment then when I saw that puff of smoke. And we might have lost someone else. We have. It's Oscar. He's gone too. So we're up to ninth. Checking out the replay of what happened to Shaxabel. And straight away, my attention is caught by Sharma. Still flashing his headlights ahead. But there is Shaxabel spinning it off into the tyre wall. But look at Sharma furiously flashing those headlights again at Oscar this time. And then he's going to make another dive. We saw him do this on lap one. And he's going to run Oscar right off the track. That's a ridiculous move. Oh, I feel really sorry for Oscar there. Let's ride on board with Sharma. And we can see him make this lunge up the inside. He's never going to get that car stopped. Misses the apex completely and just gives Oscar nowhere to go but the grass. Look at it again from the chopper cam. Sharma's never getting that stopped and completely wipes out Oscar. Right, we need to settle down a bit now. We've got a gap of almost three seconds back to Oscar in 10th. So we are in a comfy position now and we can concentrate on chasing Sharma. We need to hunt him down. He's two seconds clear at the moment, but I'm confident I've got the pace to catch him up. Just turned it a little bit too tight into that right hander. Took a bit too much of the kerb on the inside. It unsettled the car a little bit, but it doesn't seem to have done us too much harm as we hit the final turn. Now let's get on the gas early. Are we reeling this gap in on Sharma now? It's 1.2 seconds. 1.1, 1.0. We're getting closer. He broke quite early coming into T1 on the last lap. So if he does the same again, we should get a chunk of time back. And that's exactly what's happened. We're right on his tail now. And he loses the rear a little bit on exit. He's obviously pushing as hard as he can to try and get that Ferrari out of the turn quickly to open up a gap again. But he's feeling the pressure now for sure. We just need to stay right on his tail, apply even more pressure and hopefully force him into another mistake. We're approaching the entry to the carousel and we've already seen Sharma get wild here a couple of times. Is he going to do it again? We're right on his tail now and that rear steps out. That gives us an invitation. And there's contact. There's big contact. Oh, that might have been my fault. I thought I had the opportunity to get through, but he tried to shut the door on me. And there's even more contact behind. They've both gone. Sharma and Oscar are out. 
Well, we need to assess the replay to see if I was at fault for this one. There's Sharma losing it, and I thought that gave me enough room to make a move up the inside, but from the looks of this camera angle, I didn't have the room, so that might have been a bit aggressive on my part. Thankfully, Sharma held control, but there you can see in the background, he got in a complete tangle with Oscar. Now, I wonder if that was a little bit of afters from the instant a couple of laps earlier when Sharma ran Oscar wide. Let's take a look from on board with Oscar. There's the contact between me and Sharma, and Oscar gets right on Sharma's tail and then just runs right into him, and the pair of them crash out. I do think I was perhaps a little bit hasty when I rushed into that gap left by Sharma when he got out of shape in the carousel, but thankfully I was out of the way when this happened. And as messy as this instant looks, it's going to get a whole lot worse if we stay with this camera angle for a little bit longer. Look at this rejoin. Oscar's going to reverse right into the path of the oncoming traffic. And Jacquard is the unfortunate victim in the sky car. He had nowhere to go and is taken out. So we're rounding the final turn to start lap 11 and we're actually in a comfortable 8th position now. The gap back to the car behind is more than 5 seconds. But now we've got a slightly different problem, back markers. We can see Sergio ahead, he's just come out of pit lane. Now we know Sergio's got pace because we were battling with him earlier. As the yellow flags come out, so someone else has lost it. There's a car reversing right into our path and oh how did we miss him? That was close. Yeah, just when we thought we'd seen the last of Sharma, it was actually him who was the bat marker that caused us that fright then. He just loses the rear on the exit of turn one, slides onto the grass, but then, with the traffic coming, decides to reverse back onto the track to straighten himself up. Sergio goes one way, I go the other, and we both get lucky. But you know what, we've only got a lap or two to go, so I'm certainly not going to push too hard to try and keep with a lap driver here. We know Sergio's fast, so I'm quite happy just sat behind him and following along. We've got a gap of five seconds back to San Valentin in ninth. So we're looking good here, so let's just keep it steady. There's the white flag, so this will be the last lap of the race. We're going to bring it home in eighth if we can survive one more lap around Summit Point. I don't want to count my chickens in this Ferrari Fix Challenge. You never know what's going to happen. And as I say that, Sergio has completely wiped out going into turn one. Oh, I'm so glad I sat back. Yeah, it's another example of just how dangerous it is when these Ferraris clip the grass. That's exactly what happened to Sergio and he had no chance of saving that one. Well, I've got to be happy with 8th place from this race. I know it's a few positions down on where we started on the grid, but I knew that this race was going to be tough. The Ferrari Fix Challenge comes with a reputation for aggressive racing, and it was certainly an aggressive first lap. We got beaten up good and proper as we dropped all the way back down to 12th. But we regained our composure, we battled back, and I'm really happy with 8th position. My only slight regret is the incident with Sharma, the one where we took 8th position. Sharma made that mistake, and I thought I had the right to go for the pass up the inside. Sharma obviously wanted to defend. He tried to grab the apex back, and to be fair to him, he did have the line. I thought I was further ahead than I was, so perhaps that was a little bit impatient for me. I probably could have held back just a little bit. But in my defence, it wasn't the contact with me that ended Sharma's race. It was the tangle with Oscar. And that looked to me like it could have been the result of a race-long feud finally boiling over between those two. Anyway, let's turn our attentions to the classified race results. And there we are in eighth. As you can see, a fastest lap of 109.7. So we were way off the pace that we were running in qualifying. But it was good enough for a plus 20 boost in the I rating, and I needed that after my Formula V win the other day, which you can see a video of uh, on my channel. I ended up racing in the Fanatec GT3 Challenge at the weekend at Road Atlanta, mainly because it's one of my favourite tracks, but I didn't realise that it was a night race, and I had an absolute mare. I lost a load of I rating points, so to get plus 20 today, that starts to repair the damage a little bit. So that's it from iRacing this week, and if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, and also let me know what you thought of the incident with Sharma. Was it my fault? Could I have done anything differently? I'd appreciate to hear what you guys think. Cheers for now. Bye.